What's up everybody out there in YouTube land? Wrath2501 here. This is the last video of the uh, 10,000 subscriber celebration marathon. Thank you guys so much once again for all the support. You guys have been awesome. I really, really appreciate it. I'm really hoping you guys are enjoying all the videos I'm putting out today. Okay, so we're ending this by finishing off the top 18 food and beverage SCPs by Tats Top Videos as requested by Miku Hatsune, one of our biggest supporters. Okay, shouts out to Miku Hatsune. Alright, so let's check this out. We got more food to go. You know, I'm probably going to be getting hungry again. So let's go. With explicit written permission from level 4 personnel or higher. Okay, here we go. Number nine. Nine. SCP-1354. Object class, safe. Ooh. SCP-1354 is the collective designation for 12, what? 11, 250 milliliter volumes of soup stock designated SCP-1354-1. <laughs> I can't find the SCP, there's only soup. <laughs> Despite their age, instances of SCP-1354 show no signs of spoilage and have in fact proven edible. Additionally, instances of SCP-1354 so are exothermic and maintain a constant temperature of 37 degrees Celsius cool. and have shown no signs soup of evaporation. Instances of SCP-1354 are capable of written responses to verbal communication via okay, that's manifestation creepy. of letter-shaped pasta. Don't eat me! Unless otherwise It's prompted, alphabet soup. Responses will remain on the surface Yeah, I see messages in my alphabet soup, too. ...for three to four minutes before submerging Aye. and vanishing. For interview purposes, instances of SCP-1354 are to remain intact. Each instance of SCP-1354 appears to contain the consciousness from one of several dozen individuals reported missing from Oregon between the dates of the 4th of July Okay, that is screwed 19... up. I see and you. The 2nd of oh, October, hell no. 20. All missing individuals corresponding to instances Usually when my food is talking to me, it's talking to me after I ate it. But... Share several oh, characteristics. God. Most notably, age and status the shit out of my as the head of a single parent household. The whereabouts of the children of SCP-1354 instances, as well as additional missing persons believed to correspond to uncontained instances, remain unknown. SCP-1354 was brought to the Foundation's attention after persistent rumors of a talking soup began circulating in the local homeless shelters. Moving up, recruit causes psychosis. Further investigation led to the procurement of this instance as well as further 11 instances of SCP-1354 being obtained during a recent canned food drive. Class B amnestics were given to all witnesses. That's pretty messed up. Somebody turn these people into soup. SCP-261. Object class, safe. SCP-261 appears to be a large black vending machine with no front glass panel and a small keypad on the right side. Internally, SCP-261 appears to be a basic vending machine equipped to vend food and beverage items. After a key was made and the front door opened, no abnormal materials were found, and it was determined that SCP-261 has never actually contained any food or beverage items. The keypad, while connected and operating correctly, does not activate any of the dispensing mechanisms. When money is placed <clears throat> into SCP-261 and a three-digit number is entered on the keypad, SCP-261 will vend a random item. Okay. SCP-261 has not accepted any currency other than yen, with rejected currency being deposited in the coin return slot. So it's from Japan. It's unknown how these items appear. However, SCP-261 will not operate when the door is open or when recording devices are placed inside. Oh, the number entered bastard. on the keypad has no effect on the item vended, nor has any pattern been detected. One on one, one on one, one on. Items are always some form of snack food okay, and typically yeah, Japanese have bright candy attention grabbing packaging. Pocky. SCP-261 is capable of operating with no external power supply, but operation in the state will cause unstable vending to occur much more quickly unstable? than normal. Unstable? 
Was it produce living SCP food? More with the living food? Several times in a short period of time, where large amounts of money are entered before an item is vended, SCP-261 will start to dispense bizarre items in unknown languages. Cool. While still food, their suitability for human consumption is often non-existent. Items dispensed by SCP-261 are reviewed by site health and safety officials before consumption. Failure to do so releases the Foundation from any obligation regarding negative effects. Items deemed dangerous or useful well, to it. research are confiscated by site security, with financial compensation provided in proportion to money spent. So they keep Any it in the break room or some to shit? SCP-261 is approved by staff with level 2 security clearance or higher. Any and all items dispensed by SCP-261 are recorded along with the amount of money entered and the amount of time elapsed between uses. Currently, SCP-261 is used only 10 times in a 24-hour period, with no transaction exceeding the equivalent of 500 Japanese yen. Testing approved by Site Command is not under these restrictions. SCP-261 okay. was recovered in Yokohama, Japan. SCP-261 was brought to the Foundation's attention after investigating an urban legend about a magic vending machine that was circulating on the internet. SCP-261 was found in a back alley behind a large shopping center, with a handwritten sign saying, Out of Order, in Japanese taped to it. SCP-261 has no marks or identification of any kind, and no locals remember when or how it came to be in its current location. Okay, but in what ways is stuff usually not eat edible? I mean, is it made of something weird or SCP what? You need, three, you need to mention this. Object class, safe. SCP-348 is a white ceramic bowl, patterned with light blue flowers, measuring approximately 20 centimeters in diameter, and nine centimeters high. While no maker's marks are present, the Chinese characters for thinking you, you they are, eating by themselves, are they do into not the feel side of the bowl. While in the presence huh. of an individual afflicted with a minor ailment or injury, SCP-348 will fill with soup. While the ingredients present within the soup produced by SCP-348 vary, young subjects have consistently stated that they enjoyed the meal, sometimes stating that it reminds them of their parents cooking. Children who eat from SCP-348 several times often express a feeling of contentment, stating that though they are eating by themselves, they do not feel lonely. It has been noted that occasionally, after soup produced by SCP-348 has been consumed, a message will materialize on the inside of the bowl. Words produced on the inside of the bowl appear to be printed on the ceramic consistent with existing markings. The message that appears will be in the language most familiar to the drinker of the soup. After several hours, the words disappear. SCP-348 was acquired shortly after rumors of a child living in Beijing, apparently possessing remarkable recovering abilities, came to the Foundation's attention. Investigation revealed that the child in question originally discovered SCP-348 in the attic of their house, and had come to rely on it after receiving insufficient attention from their parents. The oh, child's parents, sucks, both full-time workers, refused to comment on the relationship with the child. Testing has revealed that in the event that someone older than 18 years of age attempts to consume soup created by SCP-348, the individual will find that they are less inclined to finish the meal. Some such individuals will remark that something is missing. Most will simply state that the soup was nothing out of the ordinary. Further huh. studies carried out with older subjects indicate that though messages will appear for individuals older than 18, the appearance of the message is worn and faded. SCP-348 is kept in a standard locker at Site-19. Once again, about the soup. I can't find the SCP, there's only soup! SCP-1794, object class, safe. How about a sandwich? SCP-1794 is a giant sapient grapefruit. Capable a giant sapient grapefruit? Insight, what the fuck? No means. SCP-1794 has been in Foundation care for years and shows no signs of decomposition. Psychoanalysis during interviews has revealed that SCP-1794 suffers from dissociative identity disorder and acmeophobia. 
Known identities of SCP-1794, which resemble historic social activists and revolutionaries, have been classified what? as activist pitcher SCP-1794-A and oppressed freethinker SCP-1794-B. What the hell? That's identities weird. Identities SCP-1794-A and SCP-1794-B acknowledge that they are fruit and believe they act for the good of fruit kind. Fruit kind? Following one of the previous events, a personality classified as Latin American revolutionary has been observed. This comes across almost as like a SCP joke, SCP. C. SCP-1794 is kept in a large containment tank at site. The surrounding area is fitted with speakers and an intercom. SCP-1794 can request audio media such as music or literature to be played over the speakers. However, all requests are to be approved by level 2 personnel. SCP-1794 can request to hold a conversation, either in person or over the intercom. All requests are to be approved by level 2 personnel. It's recommended that SCP-1794 should not be allowed contact with fruit. SCP-1794 was discovered on the start of fruit revolution when Mrs. of Santa Modesta contacted authorities, claiming that her breakfast was planning an uprising. Her Foundation was agents an uprising. successfully retrieved SCP-1794. There's a slight problem with that. What knife? Ah, <laughs> annoying orange. Mrs. Was administered Clad C amnesiacs and returned to her home. Since its capture in 1956, SCP-1794 has grown in size and intelligence. Oh, Research weird. is still underway. Now it's got me thinking of grapefruit from the annoying orange, you know? SCP-109. Object class, Euclid. SCP-109 is a standard issue United States Army canteen. Circa 1899, made vodka. of a tin alloy and fitted with a heavy cotton cover and a black leather strap. When opened, the item is seen to be nearly full of water. A seemingly unlimited amount of water can be removed from the container without oh, changing the handy. water level or the item's mass, which remains a consistent 3.16 kilograms. Probes of the that interior of the container reported an estimated volume of 2.8 liters and a shape consistent with the outside. The water in SCP-109 is of a slight blue-gray tint, with concentrations of 20 ppm of tin and 170 ppm of other electrolytes. The water remains at a constant temperature of 19 Celsius, but can be heated or cooled when moved to another container. Upon the item's delivery at Site-19, it was given the object class of SAFE. As tests were conducted on the item, uncertainty surrounding test results prompted Research Director to upgrade the object class to Euclid. Why? What did it do? Subjects imbibed water from SCP-109 and reported that it was very refreshing and, despite the metal content, very tasty. Urine samples from subjects were normal. Water from SCP-109 was administered to various plant organisms, all of which remained very healthy and showed no malign symptoms. Okay. One proposition for a test, which has been discussed for some time, has been involving a combination of SCP-109 and SCP-402. Due to the risk of losing one or both items, or creating a hazardous situation, this test has never been created. I don't know what 402 is. Okay, why is it, but that doesn't explain, why was it upgraded to Euclid? It still doesn't seem to do anything. SCP-294, object class, Euclid. SCP-294 appears to be a standard coffee vending machine. Oh, the this is one of the like. difference being an entry touchpad with buttons corresponding to an English keyboard. Upon depositing 50 cents US currency into the coin slot, the user is prompted to enter the name of any liquid using the touchpad. Anything Upon you doing want, so, even gold. a standard 12 ounce paper drinking cup is placed and the liquid indicated is poured. 97 initial test runs were performed, including requests for water, coffee, beer, soda, non-consumable liquids such as sulfuric acid, fluid, and motor oil, as well as substances that do not usually exist in liquid state, such as nitrogen, gold, iron, and glass. Each one returned a success. 
test runs with solid nice. materials such as diamond have failed, as it appears that SCP-294 can only deliver substances that can exist in liquid state. It's noted that after approximately like 50 lava. uses, the machine would not respond to further requests. After a period of approximately 90 minutes, the machine can restock itself. It's also interesting to note that many caustic liquids that would normally destroy paper cups seem to have no effect on the cups dispensed by the machine. Researchers have punched in several requests where SCP-294 has displayed out of range on the entry pad. It's theorized that SCP-294 has a limited range of collection and cannot reach into alternate universes or dimensions. There are no standards. Yeah, didn't they request a cup of explodium or something? Item SCP-294. However, only personnel of security clearance level two or higher are allowed to interact with it. SCP-294 is currently stored in the second floor of the personnel break room and is monitored by two guards of security clearance level three at all times. Yeah, because some guy actually accidentally requested a cup of Joe, and it actually seemed to. Like take some flesh out of a guy SCP named Joe and dispense it in liquid form. Three. I remember that one. That was a cool one, Euclid. though. I want some gold. SCP-1863 are two competing soft drinks sold exclusively within the town of Alabama. What? SCP-1863-A is a sparkling lemon-lime soft drink with hydrogen used in place of the dissolved CO2, sold as Lime Liftoff from the Citrox Corporation. Hydrogen? SCP-1863-B is a non-caffeinated root beer and cream beverage known as Sarsaparilla Cream, sold by Carl's Caffeine Club. That Neither looks of these good, organizations actually. have any record of operating within the USA prior to the discovery of SCP-1863. However, the Citrox Corporation reportedly operated out of the city of yeah. Luxembourg, from 1982 to 1999. Hmm. SCP-1863-A hmm. and SCP-1863-B are both highly addictive, despite having identical composition to equivalent non-anomalous soft drinks. Both SCP-1863-A and SCP-1863-B are capable of reacting to specific phrases, mainly praises or criticisms of the specific qualities of the SCP-1863 instance, such as flavor, chemical content, and appearance. Praising the respective SCP-1863 variety while condemning the competing variety appears to dampen the addictive effect. However, criticizing SCP-1863-A or SCP-1863-B while in the presence of the respective instance can lead to various chemical reactions, such as oh. pH fluctuations, combustion, or solidification combustion. when introduced to the human digestive tract. Both varieties of SCP-1863 are highly mutagenic, capable of drastically altering the functions of human organ systems. Oh, that's screwed up. SCP-1863-A mutates the diaphragm, causing it to act like a flotation bladder. It is capable of inflating with hydrogen gas either from the atmosphere or from SCP-1863-A. Oh, and that's what that is. have imbibed a sufficient quantity of SCP-1863-A to float up to three meters above the ground. <laughs> Failure to regularly imbibe <sighs> SCP-1863-A after drinking it results in the diaphragm collapsing, leading to suffocation without mechanical assistance. Oh, wow. So you SCP have to keep drinking it. SCP-1863-B instead targets the respiratory and circulatory systems and removes the necessity for respiration, allowing the human body to function without the need for oxygen, instead relying on carbonation from SCP-1863-B or carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to perform bodily functions. Subjects then you do still need respiration. ...of SCP-1863-B are capable of indefinitely staying in environments where a human being cannot survive without a breathing apparatus such as underwater, in gas chambers, or at high altitudes without any detrimental effects. Hmm. Failure to regularly drink SCP-1863-B after drinking it for the first time results in the inability for oxygen to be used in the body, 
and as the body cannot intake carbon dioxide without assistance from SCP-1863b, death inevitably results within 24 hours of last consumption of SCP-1863b. Hmm. Furthermore, SCP-1863-A drinkers will be highly aggressive towards individuals who have drunk SCP-1863-B at any point in their life, with the converse being true for individuals who have drunk an SCP-1863-B. If an individual drinks both SCP-1863-A and SCP-1863-B within an 89-hour period, an anomalous chemical reaction will occur between the hydrogen and carbon dioxide in the two drinks causing the digestive system to inflate, and finally... Uh, I'm thinking explode. Boom. Number two. Okay, so that one made me not hungry. Though that SCP does, flo- that thing did make me want to get a float. I'm gonna get a Rooker float Sorry. after this, okay? SCP-458 is a large size pizza one. box from Little Caesars Ooh, of their hot and ready this variety. is my favorite It's made one. of simple cardboard, measures 25 inches, and weighs about now. 20 to 20.49 this one makes me hungry. grams, depending on toppings. As a result of the unusual nature of SCP-458, measurement of weight is inconsistent. What makes SCP-458 an oddity is that, while appearing to be an ordinary pizza box, when it comes into contact with human hands, it instantly replicates within the holder's subconsciously preferred choice of pizza, down to favorite sauce, cheese, crust, and topping. It's not limited to Little Caesars brand, as pizza from all major pizza chains as well as local and even handmade pizzas have been produced. There seems to be no limit to its ability, except that it cannot make anything but pizza, and its toppings must be edible by normal human standards. The box is also rather indestructible, as all tests to destroy or dismantle the box have proven fruitless. It's assumed that the box is semi-sentient, having at least enough telepathic or empathetic ability to sense what the holder's personal choice regarding pizza are. After constant testing showed SCP-458 seemingly infinite power to generate pizza, it has henceforth been placed inside the canteen at Site 17 for free use <laughs> by personnel. After its open usage has been allowed, personnel morale has shown to have sharply increased. SCP-458 is considered safe and therefore As I understand, stored in though, they also started gaining weight. They also started getting, weight, no getting fatter because people required. just kept getting free pizza. You know, so people in that area started getting started getting fatter in that in that containment area. SCP-871. So what's number one though? If it wasn't the pizza box. Object class. Keter. Oh, this is a Keter. SCP-871 is a collection of 237 cakes. Instances of SCP-871 cakes. vary widely in appearance and size, covering the entire range of foods described by humans as cake. Okay. The smallest observed instance of SCP-871 was a miniature cupcake of a mass of 15 grams. The largest yet observed was a 22 kilogram bomb cushion measuring two meters in length. Wow. When any instance of awesome. SCP 871 is consumed by a human or a collection of humans, it is replaced approximately 24 hours afterward with a similar cake. This cake will appear on a awesome. flat surface in the vicinity of the location where the previous instance was eaten. If any of these cakes is substantially damaged through any means other than being eaten by a human, including being eaten by a non-human animal, it will be replaced instantaneously. Cool. The mechanism by which instances of SCP-871 are replaced is currently unknown. SCP-871's danger originates in the consequences of an instance not being eaten. Any instance of SCP-871 which is not consumed will cause a new cake to be created in its vicinity after 24 hours. While this is similar to its normal replacement behavior, the original instance will continue to exhibit the same properties, replicating if damaged and continuing to replace oh, itself so you every can't 24 just hours. Them. They have to be eaten. This behavior has been observed in all cases where more than 10% of the mass of an instance remained unconsumed. As there is no known mechanism for halting SCP-871's replication, any uncontained instances could replicate exponentially, quickly becoming unmanageable. No maintainable plans for the containment of more than 20,000 instances of SCP-871 have yet been devised. It's estimated that an uncontrolled outbreak originating with a single instance would render the Earth uninhabitable within 80 days. 
Oh, shit. Each reoccurrence of SCP-871 is maintained within a separate, locked concrete cell on a metal platter permanently affixed to the surface of an immovable table. Each cell housing reoccurrence of SCP-871 is to be monitored on a 24-hour basis via controlled circuit camera with individual feeds checked every 15 minutes. Upon creating an instance of SCP-871, three Class D personnel are to be escorted by armed guards to its cell, where they are to be sealed in with the instance and induced to consume it. No more than one hour may be spent okay, performing this task. In cases where additional motivation is needed, the termination of one of the Class Ds assigned to an instance of SCP-871 is authorized. Dude! Upon completion of the consumption of an instance, no participants may exit its cell until both they and the room have been thoroughly searched to confirm that no portions remain. The platter, table, and room are cleaned in the preparation of the next instance. Huh, that one's weird. I did not know about the cake one at all. So, blah, 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 blah. Scripting. Okay. So, that was... Top 18 food and beverage SCPs. That is very cool. I actually really like that one. And there are some ones that I didn't know about, but oh my god, the pizza one. Oh my god, just thinking about that makes me hungry. Let's see, wait a second. Stupid. I think he's doing something. Anyway, so, but that pizza one, oh my god, it makes me hungry every time I watch it. I'm really hungry right now. And it's not just because I've been recording a while, it's just because of that. You know, I am hungry. I want some. I want some pizza, and that thing, the picture of the float made me want to float now. I'm thinking some subliminal messages of shit were going on. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little marathon. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I hope you guys enjoyed everything I did. I really, really super mega appreciate all you, all you guys have done for me. Everything that's gone on to <clears throat> make this channel great, you know, and bringing fun and laughter back to the internet instead of just people screaming at each other and screaming hate at each other. We are going to make the internet so great again. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> return return of Trump. <laughs> it's just so stupid. Anyway, so don't forget to get down to there to test top videos. Link to his videos in the description and subscribe to him because he is awesome. He's got 640k subs and I think he deserves the whole like, you know, 50 million, all right? Cuz his shit is really good. And tune in every day to me, to new content, guys. Um, subscribe me, to me, like my video, and share me on social media so that more and more people will be aware of the insanity that is this. And I will see you guys next time. This has been one hell of a project. You know, it's not the recording. It's the rendering. Rendering for these things with all this, it... Even a short video, it can take like two hours to do this. So it's uh, <laughs> pretty inducing. And plus, I even gotta do more shit for tomorrow. So it can be stressful, but it's all worth it. Just to, just to you know, know that I'm, get, I'm getting you guys some laughs and stuff like that, and that you guys like it. So I'll see you next time. Bye bye.